this is Myung Bondi. Welcome to a brand new season of Secrets of the Garden, where we bring you expert advice on how to become a better gardener. On this glorious day, I'm in Short Hills exploring a new garden with a new co-host. I'm very thrilled to introduce to you the Director of Horticulture of Greenwood Gardens, Louis Bauer. Hi, Louis. Hi, Myung. It's a pleasure to speak with you. Well, the place looks absolutely spectacular as usual. Could you share with our audience a brief history of Greenwood Gardens? Well, it's a hundred-year-old garden, uh, an old private estate that's coming to life again as a public garden. We opened just last April to invite the public to come in and wander on their own. We built some features that were crumbling, so now it's safe and handsome again, and we're thrilled. It's been a great season. So with summer officially over, what are you planning for this time of year? It's a favorite time of year for me because some of the fall blooming plants that, that I've come to love over my years of gardening are now coming into their own. And they set us apart a little bit from other gardens. Uh, a lot of gardeners forget to plan for the fall, uh, but, but where we live here uh, in the northeast, fall is one of the most glorious times of year. What would you select to be a part of the display? Well, the first ones to, to come to my mind are the sages, or salvias as they are in Latin. The, the, they're the same plant. Uh, we uh, might first think of the little red ones that we used to buy at the garden centers in, in packs, but there are a lot of bigger ones in purples and deep blues, and even reds and peaches, um, but especially blues and purples uh, that come in the bigger, tender salvias are my favorites to this time of year. And you also say that salvias and sage, that they are actually the same. How do these names originate? Well, really, they're simply two languages. Salvia is the Latin name, and sage is the English name. And, and sage is the one uh, that I think of when I think of cooking, and we always call that sage. But in the garden, salvia is a much bigger family, and a lot of them are very ornamental. One favorite for me this year is called Silky's Dream. It is a hybrid salvia, but you can see here from this first one, which is a pale sort of salmon red, uh, that they're taller than, than we think of salvias in the bedding uh, schemes. And they're a much longer flowering plant. Oh, they're gorgeous, and this is such an unusual color. Is this hard to come by? Well, they are a little unusual in the garden centers, but more and more garden centers are responding to what people ask for, and I know of several in North Jersey that make it a habit to carry some of these salvias. And what are some of the other kinds of flowers that peak this time of year? Well, my second favorite is dahlias, and since we just looked at that wonderful salmon red-colored salvia, next to it, I think I would love to see this purple dahlia, which is coming into bloom now, called Purple Gem. It has big purple flowers and quilled petals, and although they don't love the heat of summer, they grow nicely while the summer is hot, and then as soon as September cools off, they come into full bloom. Uh, like these are just now. This plant uh, that we've been admiring while we talked about the salvias and dahlias in the background is a salvia relative. It's called Caryopteris. This one is a herbaceous Caryopteris. A lot of people know it's shrubby relatives, but I like this because of its variegation. It stands out in the garden even before it flowers, but in September it's topped off with these airy little blue flowers. It's the most carefree perennial in the garden, and yet it holds the whole border together. And it's a perfect plant then. It, it is. keeps away the rodents and pests, and uh, you don't have to tend to it. No staking, no deadheading. The animals don't like it because it has that sagey smell. Uh, so it's really an easy centerpiece in the garden, in this part of the garden, and especially at this time of year. Oh, it's a winner. <laughs> <laughs> Louis, what do we have here? This is another tender salvia, and I, I love them because they have a couple of advantages. When the, when the June flowers, all the peonies and the tulips and the wonderful gush of flowers at that time of year are finished, there are lots of empty spaces in the garden, and 
the way I like to fill them is with some tender plants like all the ones we've been talking about. But this one is, is a really great example because you can see how big it is. But it was tiny when I planted them in the middle of June. Because they're tender, they grow really quickly in the hot summer weather and you get a big plant like this. When you say tender, what does that mean? It means that they're not cold tolerant enough to survive our winters. You got a cutting and you kept it going throughout the winter? I did. I, uh, I have cuttings now already in September. September is a nice time to take cuttings because it's warm enough for them to root quickly and they make a nice little plant and they kind of stand still on, on the windowsill. To go along with these nice uh, salvias that are coming up, this one's called Phyllis Fancy, uh, we have asters in all these beds, un around it on this side and all along the pathway on the other side, and they'll be coming along to keep it company and surrounded by purple in two or three weeks. Well, Louis, it looks like it's only going to be a couple of weeks before the autumn hues turn into a symphony of spectacular colors. You're right, Myung, and we're really looking forward to having lots of visitors in our first autumn open. The colors really are sure to be nice. And I hope you have enjoyed this segment of Secrets of the Garden, and please join us next time when we show you how to plant bulbs indoors and out. I'm Myung Bondi. And I'm Louis Bauer. Happy, Happy gardening! gardening.